Thanks very much, Stephen. Uh, I've managed to not trip up, which is the first hazard in this one. Um, so yeah, as uh, Stephen mentioned, I'm the um, Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Champion for the board. Um, I don't know if how many of you are aware of my position or what I do, um, but basically I um, bring up these issues, champion these issues with the board and with wider CIFA so that I can make sure that we are acting upon and working towards things. Um, and the way I do that is I'm actually part of what's called the Standing Committee. Some of you might not be too familiar with it. It uh, was finally ratified last year as part of CIFA. It has evolved from what was the um, Equality and Diversity Special Interest Group um, that then also evolved through and was parallel to the Steering Group, which also did some actions and some advice to the board. Um, and has now become a Standing Committee, which stands alongside things like... Um, the uh, other committees that ratify memberships and ROs and that kind of thing. So it's part of the structure of CIFA. Um, and what we do is identify our priorities as an organisation um, and make recommendations to the board to take action on those. Um, and to do that, we do things um, like research, we speak to our membership, and we also um, do advocacy based on lived experience of our panel members as well. Um, and since we were formed last year, we started taking some actions. Uh, we formed a neurodiverse networking group, which is sort of a pilot scheme for other networking groups we're hoping to launch, where members can share their experiences. It's a group really where you can have solidarity, share experiences, maybe training that you can share with your organisations. Um, and we're just sort of like launching that as a, a gateway to other uh, networking groups we're hoping to launch. We're also developing research, more which I'll go into later, which will inform our future advocacy for what changes and what actions do we need to be taking as an organisation. Um, and alongside that surveying membership, some of you might have filled in or seen the recent um, workplace experiences survey that we've been doing to gauge experience of harassment and bullying experience of people from different uh, backgrounds. Um, and also um, working on some events and training. Some of you may have attended, for example, the gendered intelligence training we did on trans awareness last year in the workplace which was just one of um, lots of training that we're hoping to bring into there, which we're hoping will embed EDI practice, not just as an additional or a nice to have, but as a fundamental of all workplaces within the sector. Um, so one thing I'd like to talk about, first of all, is something we did to really benchmark where we're at now as an organisation. Um, so we took on the Royal Academy of Engineering and Science Council. They have something called the Progression Framework for EDI. And basically you look where you are on lots of different categories within your organization. Where are we at now? What are we doing? What are our practices like? What are experiences like for people that work with us or the clients that we work with? Um, and we score ourselves um, on that network. So there was a steering group of us from the EDI committee and the board and staff as well that worked on this. Um, and as you can see, we've got quite a bit of work to do. Uh, this was the first of very many sobering experiences being part of this committee where we've really had taken a very honest and very frank look at our working practices and what we're doing and to see where are those gaps, what's not happening, what needs to happen, what needs to change. Um, and as you can see, the maximum is four. So four is we're doing everything really well. We've got great practices embedded. We're working for the benefit of all of our staff. Um, we're taking active and not just passive ways of working. We've not just got policies, but we've got actions in place. We're um, proactively being anti-racist. We're proactively um, tackling inequalities rather than just um, having a commitment to. So as you can see, if four is a maximum, we've got quite a lot of work to be doing in quite a lot of these areas. The only one where there's a bit of an anomaly, which is prizes, awards and grants, we don't actually do that as an organisation, so we haven't measured that one. It's not that we're absolutely abysmal at doing it, which is why it's <laughs> at zero in there. It's because we don't actually do that, so we haven't measured it. So we took a really frank look at that. Um, and from that, that was how we drafted some of our very first advice to the board on what do our priorities need to be, what training needs to be in place, how do we need to start looking at changing our policies and the ways that we speak to our members and our ROs, how do we start to change even that accreditation process as well. Um, and then following on from that, one of the first key priorities is like, well, we need to do some research into what are the very barriers to entry, progression within the career in heritage and archaeology. Um, because this came up again and again while we're doing that progression framework was that there's people aren't being represented because they're not there or they're leaving. So the very first piece of research we commissioned with, thankfully, from funding from Historic England, uh, we've commissioned Cultural Associates Oxford to conduct some qualitative research into those inequalities. So it's qualitative. So we've got a little bit of the quantitative side from things like profile and the profession. So we know the numbers and where the numbers aren't there indeed. So now it's is qualitative, it's gaining an insight into the very experiences of people that are in the profession or have left or haven't entered the profession. So they've done a lot of work of one-to-one um, -one interviews, storytelling exercises, they've done um, focus groups of different groups of people they've reached out to, but also things more broadly, so they've done polling, surveying on social media as well. 
Um, and this poll was one they did quite early on in the process, which I thought was a very eye-opening experience. Um, if you work in study archaeology, have you experienced or witnessed inequality? And 89.3% of people had indeed. So that's my first very sobering message this afternoon is we've made a start. We're here, we're saying something, but my gosh, we're not doing enough by any way near are we doing enough. Because what this research has brought, the report unfortunately isn't ready for today's session. It's currently going through just some approvals. But what that research has found is that anything that's been done, so any initiatives, any progress we thought we've made, it's not actual progress. The people that should be affecting, they're still leaving. They're still facing harassment and bullying. Um, they're still not having a great experience. They're not progressing through the profession. So um, this is my, unfortunately, not the most positive start today, but to say that all of us in this room have got a job to do that we need to be really working on. Um, so what's next for us as a standing committee? Because obviously we've got next steps and actions. So we're going to publish those findings of that research and share it with people. Also alongside the results of that survey I was mentioning about workplace experiences, because between them there's some really quite, there's an alarming picture there of, an in, of a profession that's stagnated, that's exclusionary, that's not moving at all, that in several years time will be really, really behind the curve with society. Um, and that really need some very sobering and very quick actions to remedy some of those things. Um, and we're really hoping that that will be an impetus, not only for within CIFA, but for the entire profession to realize and take stock of what is happening and what's not happening. Um, and that we can together as a profession start making those things happen. And also from that, we identify other priorities. Um, so from this research, does more research need to happen? We're hoping that from it, we can build up a research profile and maybe even get some funded PhD going even more to pick into this information, pick into these experiences, speak to even more people about why they're not here, why um, there's been that barrier there. And just so that we can then transform that into new ways of working for CIFA, new ways of our roles for working, new ways for our members to work so that it becomes a profession that is actually representative. Um, more training as well. So we started our training program, but we really want to start embedding even more into that. So we're gonna partner with the Enabled Archaeology Foundation to do some more disability um, training for workplaces. Um, but also things across what we call the Nine Characteristics and Equalities Act, um, just embedding them into everyday practice. So for now it will be, you can access them online or they, can, they are available, but we'd like eventually to move towards, you need to do these things to be considered um, a professional in this industry. Um, we're also going to recruit for additional member to our standing committee, because although we do have quite a bit of diversity now at the moment, um, there's absolutely nobody from the global majority in there. So we've got nothing from that perspective whatsoever, which is a glaring omission to me. Um, so we successfully petitioned the board to ask, can we have an additional member specifically asking someone um, from that demographic? Um, because we urgently need their voice and urgently their perspective. Uh, we're also developing an EDI toolkit that will sit on our website um, that will be scalable to from the smallest to the largest organization to say, you know, how do we, what tools do we use? How do we tackle these things? You know, because we know a lot of organizations, they might have made some steps to start, um, but it's sort of, where do we go next? How do we do it? So we're going to provide the very basic tools to start upon that journey. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. I'm afraid it's rather sobering and it's possibly not the, uh, the most positive start to your conference experience. But I think as a industry, we need to be frank about where we are and where we're not. Um, I joined the board sort of three years ago with the idea that I'm going to work from within to change things. And I wouldn't have stayed if I didn't think it was happening. So I, I believe it changes happening, but I think it nearly needs to notch up a gear. Um, so that's the where we're at at the moment. And I really hope that we can all work together to make it even better. Thank you.